Hello everybody, Zona coming from Essence of Zen here, bringing you a series of tutorials covering the program as well as programming language of GNU Octave. When dealing with these tutorials, I will expect you to know the basic concepts of programming such as assigning, uh, mathematical operators, less than, great than, equal to, comparisons, what is in an int, compared to a double, a float, strings, chars, etc. Getting started with GNU Octave, is, is really important to state that it's the open source free version, in, in layman's terms, of MATLAB. Uh, they structured the GUI and layout to be identical uh, as much as possible to MATLAB for anyone who may have used MATLAB uh, at a university, a school, a work environment. I think you'll find GNU Octave to be uh, very intuitive, uh, very free-forming and similar. So, When looking at the GUI, you'll notice a set of panels or windows or areas. So when you have the entire program here on the right, you have your command window. This is essentially a mix between a shell, think Python, the Python idle shell, uh, as well as a command line interface. For instance, I can type help, uh, and you can see they have a help name and etc. cetera, um, four built-in functions, and whatever else you may need. Moving on down, you see documentation, so you can actually go through and look up any specifics uh, showcasing that of GNU Octo's uh, functionality and built-in mechanics. In case you want to see more menus and or windows, you can go up to the bar at the top, click windows, and show things like the editor. Now the editor will be added to the bottom of the right hand window, and what you can see now is something very similar to Notepad++, or if you use things like, again, Python or other uh, text editors, is simply a text editor. I can actually start typing code here and, and it, it'll do the the line numbering and etc. Over on the left you'll see your file browser. Uh, this essentially locates your directory and etc. Now if you use Linux you can actually uh, use basic commands such as cd uh, and change your directory. Nope, the C drive, um, and I believe I have a folder by the name of programming, do I not? I do! So CD Octave, and now I'm in my Octave uh, directory. Now let's say you've propagated the command win menu with a lot of useless garbage or text. From here we can simply do CLC, which stands for clear the command line, or the command window, and it does just that. Um, so moving back over to the left, beneath the file browser, you can see uh, the workspace. Uh, you're probably wondering, what is the workspace? It keeps track of what you're doing within the command window. So again, because MATLAB and by proxy, Octave is its own programming language, you can basically use syntax to set variables and write code like any other programming language. Uh, it's very similar to other languages, but again, it has its own properties. So some things may not work in Octave that you may be comfortable with in Java or JavaScript or Python or etc. So going over the basics, we have things like assignment A equals 10. And then you'll notice in the workspace we have the name of a variable, A, it is a class double, dimensions one by one, and the value is 10. Now we could even go further. Uh, let's go with B equals 25.3 or 222, another double. C equals uh, quotation marks, hello, uh, is a char. And if you're wondering why is a string set to be a char, Think like the C programming language. It is an array of chars. That's what strings are. Uh, D, D equals casting or magic and etc. And what's funny is, um, is there a length function? I think. Yeah. 
So if you're wondering about the, the dimensions, the for, for the char one by thirteen is because it's thirteen characters long. Uh, so in an array or in a matrix, we have one row with thirteen columns, and that's what the dimensions pretty much stand for. So well, why else would you need more dimensions? Well, Octav and by proxy MATLAB, they're one one and the same, and essentially at the base. Uh, is for mathematical computations. In fact, you'll probably see on their websites or various different descriptions something like it being a high-level programming language that's intended for computation of mathematical uh, properties or something along those lines from nonlinear and, and, and uh, algorithmic proportions and etc. So that's kind of what it is. So what we can actually do is set up a matrix. Ah, sorry. It has to be the you know equal uh, dimensions. So now we have a new matrix with two rows and four columns, and you'll see in the dimensions two by four. Uh, I can now actually take my matrix and print it out if I want to. It's 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 just that that cool. So go around like play play with more uh, mechanics, and you you'll see it's very similar to. Uh, other programming links, especially Python. So if you don't know basic programming, I highly recommend checking out our old, old, old Python series on getting started with programming, learning about uh, variables, uh, equations, basic syntax, and just get used to the feel of it. So another aspect that you want to look at in MATLAB and by proxy Octave is the semicolon icon. Now semicolons, they act as a suppressor. So if we go back and look through our command history, which is the, basically all the commands that we've used uh, before, uh, we'll know we, we see things such as do 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 do. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, we have C equals hello. So if I do type C equals uh, hello, it gives us the output C equals hello. And the same thing with like D with other things. Uh, but let's say we don't want it to to repeat or showcase what we just assigned C to. Uh, we may not care. We may not want it. Blah, 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 blah. So we can suppress that with the semicolon icon. Howdy. And then semicolon. And boom. We don't get that repeat of the uh, actions that we just committed via the command window. Uh, if you're curious about things like log, it actually knows how to do do that. Uh, it actually knows what pi is. Uh, it knows what e is. Uh, I do believe it, it'll state that i is an imaginary number. Yep, the 0 plus 1i. Uh, is there a square root function? Yes, there is. Uh, so yeah, it it's really smart in terms of the mathematical equations and mathematical properties of things. But do realize that because we can do things like pi and log and etc., these are built-in keywords and built-in functions that you don't want to try to reassign, such as pi equal 20. Uh, see, now we have an issue. We can no longer call our pi being 3.1416, uh, and that's very problematic. Well, in case you accidentally mess up with assigning a keyword or a, uh, a particular set variable such as pi, you can use the clr command followed by what you previously just said. So if I do this, clear pi, and we'll look uh, over to our workspace, and we see that pi is located over here. So we'll do clr, which stands for clear again, PI because that's our variable PI, which is a double one by one twenty. Uh, we do this. Ah, so things actually clear. If we type in clear PI, it remove our PI value, our PI variable. So if we type PI again, we get that three point one four one six. So just to reiterate or to reshow this case, E is a already set in place value for the two point seven uh, one eight three. If we assigned E to a different value, uh, such as three point one four one six, which you should never, 
whenever you do that is known as blasphemy within the mathematical community uh, so if we do not want to show that 3.1416 with e we type in clear followed by e and then e will return back to its default correct value of 2.7183 so what if you type in clear without, you know, a parameter, an argument, something targeting to be cleared? Uh, well, you probably guess that it clears your entire workspace. Uh, if, if you did, you guessed right. If you did not, rewind the video, take another guess, I'll never know. So if we type clear and hit enter, our entire workspace is now gone. So now even things like our D is, is no longer defined. Uh, and etc. So we have to reinitialize or redefine any variables that we want to use again. So again, play with the, the, the command window, play with the particular program, get used to file browsers and etc. And in case you ever want to log your progression or log what you've been doing with Octave, you can go ahead and use the diary function. Now you can type diary and type on and it'll create a diary file. And when you type things in it, such as uh, display, hello, and we'll talk about disp later on and whatnot, but then you type diary off. What this would do is create a file within your file browser directory, for this case, C programming octave. Uh, and you can open this file via a text editor, such as notepad or notepad plus uh, plus. And you'll see everything in between diary on and diary off that you've typed in the command window. But Zen, I bet you're thinking, what if you do not want to utilize the title of diary? Well, you can type diary and give a particular name of the file, such as uh, me goofing txt and now you have a proper you know document with the valid extension and do something like this i have a proper txt file diary off and now that file should be uh, ready to be read and the reason why we use diary off is because you cannot open a file that is currently open for writing because it's just not smart. So if we go over to that particular folder for Octave, we'll see diary with no extension. We will right click, edit with notepad plus uh, plus, and we'll see display hello and diary off. Uh, same thing with me goofing. I'm a proper text file. Everything that we've typed in between diary on and diary off. In the meantime, feel free to support Essence of Zen by using our link to start a 30-day trial for Kindle Unlimited. That's free access to over 10,000 books and audiobooks for 30 days. Unlimited reading, unlimited listening, any device. When nearing the end of the trial, if you don't want to continue it, be sure to cancel the service renewal via Amazon.com slash MyCD. Thank you. And that's pretty much it for logging your particular sessions with Octave. I will see you all in the next video covering things like uh, if statements, while loops, and for loops uh, without going into too deep of the clarification with those in the next video. So I'll see you all in episode two, but until then, as always, take care.